Okay, everyone. So now we're going to do question 30 from chapter 8. And this is a combination of concepts, but it is still primarily conservation of energy. So right now we're going to have, we have a spring connected to like a pulley and it's going to be down a ramp. Okay. So here is the angle theta. We have a spring. Okay. And it's connected to a string. And then we have a box here and it's going down, going down this ramp. And so this box has a mass of two kilograms. This angle is 40 degrees. We are, this height is unknown. So H is unknown, but we will use the, the top where the box is starting as zero. That will be the reference point, okay? And then uh, we know that the spring constant of this spring is 120 Newton meters. And so the question is asking, what would the speed of the box be if it moves down 10 centimeters, assuming that the pulley is massless and frictionless? Well, Let's begin by doing conservation of energy, our favorite principle from this chapter. So beginning energies, final energies. So beginning, this, um, this box does not have kinetic energy. It also does not have gravitational potential energy because our height is at zero, assuming that the height the box starts at is the reference point. So it's zero and zero, okay? But it appears that there is actually a lot of energies for the final because we have potential energy of the spring. It's being stretched. Now we have gravitational potential energy. And on top of that, we also have kinetic energy, okay? So let's write everything out. So on this side, it's equal to zero. Potential energy of the spring is one half kx squared. And then gravitational potential energy, since it's moving downward in the negative direction, it's minus mg. And then what is d equal to? Well, actually, the separation is vertical, right? The separation is the vertical component. And this angle is also theta. So we know that the height the box is at this height, this height is equal to the separation, so d times sine of theta. And then we add in our kinetic energy, one half mv squared. And from here to find v, all you do is solve for v, right? So we add mgd sine theta to this side. We subtract one half kx squared. And that is equal to one half m v final squared. We multiply by two, so two m g d sine theta minus k x squared is equal to m v final squared. And what do we do? Well, divide m on both sides and square root it. Here, I will move my work. I will move my work up here. So v final will equal to the square root of 2 mgd sine theta minus kx squared all over m. That's what v final is equal to. And that is your answer for a because it's asking for the final, it's asking for the final velocity when the box is down here, right? And now b wants to know how far down the incline from its point of release does the box slide down? before momentarily stopping. Okay, okay. So let me actually erase a bunch of stuff right now. And while I erase stuff, let's just talk through this problem, right? So basically the problem is asking like, what is the spring's stretch? That's basically what it's asking. And how do we know that? Well, it wants to know how far down the uh, box is being is being pulled basically. And basically it wants to know when the box isn't moving. So we know that velocity 
will not be playing a factor. So it will have no kinetic energy at the end. All right, so now let's start. Once again, conservation of energy. Initial energy, final energy. Again, we have no initial energy. No initial energy. Uh, reference point is still zero, does not have any kinetic energy to be start with. To start with, it was not pushed anything or anything like that, uh, but it does have gravitational potential energy and it does have spring. It does have the potential energy of the spring, okay? And this is equal to, zero is equal to negative m, g, and then d sine theta plus one half kx squared. And what do we do here? We solve for x. So you add md sine theta to that side, to the left side, one half kx squared, solve for x. Multiply by two here, mgd sine theta is equal to kx squared. Move our work up here. x is equal to the square root of two mgd sine theta all over k. And if you're not sure how I did that, divided k on both sides and then square rooted the x. And that will be your separation. And this is very interesting because you're actually going to be using uh, what you find from b to solve for c. c wants to know what is the magnitude of the acceleration of this box, right? Okay, so this is an entirely different, this is a concept you learned in the previous chapter, and that's force, right? Newton's second law says uh, net force. Well, keep that in mind. It's not just force. It is net force. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, what is a net force? Well, the net force in this case is what? The force that the spring is exerting when it is pulling the box up but at the same time, there is a force of gravity pulling the box down, right? So how do we know what the force of the spring is? Well, we know that force of spring, force of spring minus the force of gravity component, because it is not, you know, horizontal, it's going down a ramp, component is equal to ma. That's the net. And our, our, uh, Force of the spring is equal to what? Well, that's equal to our spring constant times our separation. And of course, force of gravity, okay, is equal to ma. And you know what delta x is? Because, because delta x here is equal to your separation here. I should actually make that more clear. So let me write delta, delta x, delta x, so you guys won't get confused right? Delta x here. That's the separation. And all you do now is you have k. You know what your spring constant is because it's given to you 120 Newton meters. You substitute that. You multiply it by whatever value you found in b, which is your separation, and then mg sine theta, right? mg sine theta, easy. m is the mass of your box. g is the gravitational constant. Sine of theta, what is the angle given? Well, that's 40 degrees and is equal to ma. What is m? Two kilograms. The box is already given to you. And that's the magnitude of your acceleration. So let me just write that out for you guys. So acceleration is equal to your spring constant times the separation that you found in b uh, minus mg sine theta all over m. And that's acceleration. And now d is just a continuation of this problem, right? D wants to know uh, what direction it is. Um, so I believe that if you solve this problem, uh, the box will actually be moving upwards. So the acceleration is a positive upward acceleration. So keep that in mind. Whatever acceleration you find here, I believe it would be a positive upward acceleration. Solve it out and you'll know. And that's all for problem number 30.